Free agency is upon us, and we are looking at several targets for the New York Rangers, including Tyler Bertuzzi. You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 1101 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. So I want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And we are, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So this is going to be very likely the last in our series of off-season episodes here where we take a look at different UFA targets for the New York Rangers. We've already covered uh, players such as Tyler Toffoli, Jonathan Marcheseau, and Patrick Kane in previous episodes. And today, that's all we're going to do. going to take a look at three uh, UFA targets that I have highlighted here. We're also going to throw in a couple of honorable mentions at the end because, as I mentioned, uh, free agency is right here upon us. It begins on Monday at noon. And definitely check out Locked On Rangers uh, around that time because we are going to be going live right around 11.50 a.m., you know, about 10 minutes before all the madness starts and, you know, just breaking everything down and talking about everything uh, that the Rangers do, reacting in real time and just having some fun with it. So for right now, what we're going to do is take a look at a couple of different uh, UFA targets for the Rangers. The first one is going to be Tyler Bertuzzi, but just keep in mind, all these players that I'm going to talk about here today, there's a number of factors that we don't know how it's going to go. Right now, the Rangers have about $12.84 million in cap space, but you got to remember, uh, assuming neither player gets traded, they will need enough space to re-sign Ryan Lindgren, to re-sign Brian Schneider. How is the Jacob Truba situation going to play out? Is he still going to be a Ranger in a couple of days here? Could Capo Caco be traded? All these things could swing, you know, my opinion on this one way or the other as far as, you know, the, the likelihood of landing these targets or um, how, how much sense it makes to pursue these targets. But with all that said, let's go ahead and uh, have some fun here and take a look at a couple more UFA targets for the Rangers before the real thing starts. And uh, the first one, as I mentioned, Tyler Bertuzzi, 29 years old, can play left wing or right wing, six foot one, 186 pounds. So they're bigger players, but he's a sizable player and certainly plays with some edge and some physicality as well. Uh, he's getting toward the top of my wish list because this is somebody who brings a nice blend of skill and snarl. Uh, players like that don't grow on trees. I, I do think he's probably not going to come cheap. More on that in a second. But the biggest thing with Bertuzzi for me is that he fills two needs. There's enough offense to his game where you can plug him in there with Mika Zibanejad and Chris Kreider on the top line, and I don't think he would feel out of place. And on top of that, I would think he'd probably be the best offensive player that they've had probably since uh, Pavel Buchnevich was traded. So he'd be an upgrade there, and hopefully he can get the two of them going and do some of the dirty work on that line. And that leads me into my next point about him, the fact that there is some edge to his game, there is some physicality, and again, somebody certainly willing uh, to do the dirty work. Another reason that I really like Bertuzzi, and this is going to sound strange at first, but stay with me, uh, his offensive numbers were down a bit last season. And again, at first glance, maybe that doesn't make sense, but that probably means that you can get him for at least a little bit less money, maybe a little bit shorter term than you would be able to if he was coming off of, say, like the best season of his career or one of the best seasons of his career. Uh, last year, he was with the Toronto Maple Leafs, his first year there and could be his last year there, depending on you know whether he resigns with them or not. Um, but 80 games with the Leafs, 21 goals, 22 assists, 43 points. He was also a plus two. Time on the ice was 16.03, 44 block shots, 98 hits, 44 takeaways against 47 giveaways. The year before that, though, a uh, couple more points, at least in terms of points per game. He played 50 games while splitting that season between Detroit and Boston, and he ended up with eight goals, 22 assists, so obviously 30 points. He was a minus eight. So his points per game were higher that season than the one that just concluded. And the year before that, if we go – Take it a step further here with Detroit, uh, 68 games, a 30-30 season for Bertuzzi. 30 goals and 32 assists to be exact, 62 points, flirting with point-per-game territory. He was a minus 11, but that was one of his best seasons ever. As far as like why his numbers were down this past year, 
Hard to say for sure. I don't watch every Toronto Maple Leafs game, but you figure there are a lot of star players on that team, so that probably leads to less ice time, and indeed it did lead to a little bit less ice time uh, for Bertuzzi. The other thing, too, is that you know Bertuzzi is not going to be you know, he, he played some top six for them, but I just get the feeling that if he's out there with Mika Zabaj and Chris Kreider, you're going to see more points. You're going to see more ice time. I mean, those two things kind of go hand in hand, at least a little bit. And people can say what they want to about Mika Zabanjad and Chris Kreider. But, you know, one of his line mates, Bertuzzi, to end last season was Max Domi. And, you know, there, there's good things to like about Domi. He could even be a target for the Rangers this offseason. He himself is a UFA, but he's not going to do as much offensively as, as somebody like Kreider or Mika. So I think you'll see his points uh, swing back up for that reason. The other big thing is that Bertuzzi was on Toronto's second power play unit. That's probably where you'd be with the Rangers too, but in terms of explaining why the points were down a little bit, going from playing on Detroit's you know, top power play unit the last couple of seasons to Toronto's second unit, um, that will you know make a little bit of a hit uh, in terms of your offensive production, and I think it did with Bertuzzi. Uh, as far as his career stats, again, Wings, Bruins, Leafs, 406 games, 113 goals, 148 assists, 261 points. He's a minus 37 uh, for his career, but you got to keep in mind, uh, he spent the vast majority of his career playing on a Detroit team that was absolutely terrible at that time. Nobody's coming out of the, that season with a, a good plus minus. And obviously Detroit has turned it around since then. Uh, but also 217 block shots and 442 hits. And I think another thing that Ranger fans are really looking for in, in terms of any UFA that they pick up this offseason or maybe even a guy that they trade for is, okay, does this guy get the job done when the lights are brightest, and specifically when the playoffs start? And with Bertuzzi, there's a very, very small sample size, but you have to say yes, at least based on what he's done these past two seasons. He's only played in 14 playoff games in the NHL, seven this past season, uh, seven the year before that. But in those 14 games, he has uh, six goals and eight assists. So exactly 14 points in the 14 games. And his physical style and grinding style, that just tends to translate pretty well to playoffs. And again, not the biggest sample size you'll ever see. But hey, you know what? 14 points in 14 playoff games is 14 points in 14 playoff games. So uh, you, you like um, you like the uh, the the um, likelihood, there we go, the likelihood that he could continue that. It just seems like he's somebody that his game is uh, built for playoff hockey. And one other thing I want to throw out there is I've been kind of pitching the idea, regardless of which UFA we're talking about, of the Rangers potentially trying to sign like a big free agent target for frankly too much money, but only on a one-year contract. Because what that does is it allows you to bring somebody in, go all in for you know this upcoming season, and not have their contract overlap with next offseason, which again, the Rangers have a ton of free agents. Not going to go through the list every time I talk about this, but you guys know the deal. You guys know there's a lot of really important players. They're going to be uh, due for some raises next offseason. And so if you sign him to a one-year deal, you avoid that. His contract does not overlap uh, with the free agents that you have next season. Now, how likely is Bertuzzi to do that? I don't know for sure, but one thing I do know for sure is that that's literally what he did this past offseason. He signed a one-year $5.5 million deal with Toronto, and we've seen other players do it. You know, I, I cited uh, Tarasenko, one-year $5 million with Ottawa this past year, and he ends up winning the Cup uh, with the Panthers, so that worked out pretty nicely for him. And uh, in the past, you know, Taylor Hall, one-year $8 million with Buffalo, ended up being traded to the Bruins. So players do it. I, I don't know if, like, Bertuzzi would be willing or... Uh, open to the idea of doing it two seasons in a row. At some point, I think guys want some longevity and they want some term, but we'll see. I can't speak for Bertuzzi. Maybe if the Rangers go high enough on a one-year deal, uh, they can bring him in. And if not, you know, can you sign him to a long-term contract? Now, Bertuzzi is only 29. So if you have to go up to like five or six years, it's not the end of the world. I mean, if you go, say even six years, we'll use the extreme example. Uh, so he would be 35 when his contract ends. So he's getting up there a little bit, but... Um, you know, even if he is starting to slip a little bit, you know, the, the last year or two, that's kind of the name of the game. When you sign somebody to a multi-year deal, uh, often to outbid the other teams around the NHL, you're gonna have to add on, you know, an extra year, an extra two years in some cases, uh, to, to make that happen. So, you know, I'd, I'd be open to any of these ideas. I think Bertuzzi's a really nice fit for the Rangers. I feel like he checks a lot of boxes and, uh, just a well-rounded player that I think could really help this team. And again, very small sample size, but I love the fact that he has delivered uh, when it comes to playoff hockey. And I get the feeling he'd probably do the same thing uh, as a member of the New York Rangers. So we're going to keep everything rolling here in just a second. I want to uh, shift our attention to a couple other UFAs. I'm going to 
keep their identity a secret for now, but uh, we will talk about those players. A couple of uh, big, hard-hitting forwards in just a second. All right, we just want to take a minute to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much that I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games. And the sports aren't sportsing like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There is something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right, so got to go ahead and give a big shout out to the everydayers. You guys are definitely going to want to stick around, catch the next uh, bunch of episodes here on Locked on New York Rangers. We'll be doing, once again, our live episode on Monday afternoon, going live around 1150 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we will be tracking everything that happens during free agency. Always an exciting day, and it's going to be a lot of fun uh, to watch and react in real time. And then in future episodes, we will continue to talk about all the Ranger free agent signings as well as this year's draft class. So want to keep everything rolling here. want to identify another UFA target for the New York Rangers. I really like the idea, let me just say this first, of the Rangers going after a uh, top-line right-wing caliber player, and then a third-line center player. Those, to me, seem to be the two biggest needs, and I'm tired of uh, them not being able to fill that top-line right-wing role. So that's the position where I'd like to see them really spend money. And then third-line center, uh, I would like to see them, you know, maybe not give out a massive contract, but bring in somebody who's solid and who can get the job done and has an all-around game. Uh, I am going to go slightly against that philosophy for the next player, though. The next player is going to be Chandler Stevenson. And here's why. Got to give you guys a quick programming note here. So I had already recorded this episode. And this segment, this entire segment here that you're hearing or watching right now, segment two, this one is taking the place of a segment that I had recorded on Dakota Joshua. Dakota Joshua is somebody that I really liked a lot. Unfortunately, the Vancouver Canucks must like him a lot as well because they just signed him uh, to, I believe, a three-year deal, and he is no longer available as a UFA. So I need another player to talk about, and I want to go ahead and make that Chandler Stevenson. Now, obviously, he's not as big as Joshua. Joshua's, you know, just an absolute beast, and uh, he would have been near the top of my list as far as uh, potential UFA targets for the Rangers. But Chandler Stevenson, somebody the Rangers have been linked to at least occasionally in the past. I don't know how serious it ever was, but they've been linked to him. Uh, six feet tall, 209 pounds. He just turned 30, won't be 31 until next April, so a little bit younger than some of the other uh, UFAs that are out there. He ended this past season as the center for Vegas' second line, along with uh, Ivan Barbashev and Mark Stone. That is whenever, you know, Mark Stone decides that he's not injured. It always seems to be right around the playoffs. Uh, but yeah, he plays center. He can also play some left wing. I don't know about right wing. I mean, I would imagine that he could probably handle it, but I don't see him listed as a right wing anywhere uh, that I can find. Uh, another thing to like about Stevenson, uh, in addition to the fact that, you know, he he's a good offensive player and can possibly, you know, fill a need for the Rangers, special teams. He does it all when it comes to special teams. He ended last season on Vegas's top power play unit and its second penalty kill unit. And, you know, that's that kind of bodes well for what a good job he does there because Vegas is obviously a very talented team, very deep team. They had won the Stanley Cup. You know, they're the defending Stanley Cup champions in this season that just concluded here. Uh, so that's very encouraging that he was able to carve out such a big role on both special teams units. And when you look at the penalty kill, Rangers have already lost a good penalty killer in Barkley Goodrow, claimed on waivers by the Sharks, and you got to figure that Alex Winberg is probably walking in free agency. So there goes another very good penalty killer, and you'll need to bring in somebody, and Chandler Stevenson uh, can play that role. Uh, as far as where he plays with the Rangers, what his role would be, I mean, I would imagine probably third-line center. I don't know if maybe he's up for playing right wing and you give him a shot on top-line right wing. That's you know possibly an option. As we noted, he has played left wing in the past. Uh, part of the reason why I think Stevenson is a long shot, and there are certainly things to like about him, but, you know, Goodrow was just waived, and the biggest reason for that is he was making too much money. Well, if you bring in Chandler Stevenson, and all you want him to do is be your third-line center, I mean, you could do that, but you're, again, going to have a situation where a guy in the bottom six is probably making a little too much money for the typical bottom sixer. Now, of course, 
The counterpoint to that is that Chandler Stevenson is not necessarily a typical bottom sixer. You know, he's obviously uh, somebody that can play in the top six and somebody that has done that in the past. And if you want to compare him to Barclay Goodrow, I mean, Chandler Stevenson is just the far better player. So you could, you know, stomach that a little bit more than, you know, what you're paying for Barclay Goodrow. You can pay Chandler Stevenson a significant amount of money and still say, okay, well, this guy's a really productive player and he does a little bit of everything. Obviously, there's far more offense from him than there is uh, from somebody like Barclay Goodrow. But, you know, again, I, I do like the idea of the Rangers spending big at top line right wing and then giving out kind of like a medium contract to third line center. If you do it this way and Stevenson stays at center, then you're kind of doing it backward. But you could go down this road if you're the Rangers and you miss out on all your top line right wing targets. Hopefully that doesn't happen because I do think that's the Rangers' biggest need. But this is an option that is at least on the table for the Rangers, although I would consider at least somewhat of a long shot. I also want to talk about what kind of contract he could be looking at. Stevenson's last contract was for four years at $2.75 million a year. And what a steal that turned out to be. Uh, Stevenson, for his career, before he signed the contract, the four-year contract that I just described, he had never gotten more than 26 points in any season of his career. In the four seasons after he signed his contract, he got anywhere between 35 and 65 points in all four of those seasons. And the season where he got... Uh, 35 points was one of the ones that was shortened by COVID. So as far as points per game, you know, it was up that year for him as well. The last three seasons from most recent to least recent for Stevenson, 51 points, 65 points, 64 points. So fair to say he's certainly going to get a raise. And I just don't know that the Rangers will be able to afford it. Again, they can go big for Chandler Stevenson if they decide to pass on the right wing options that are available, or if they just miss out on all of them, uh, that could be an option. Of course, you could always... Uh, clear some more cap space and make room for a Stevenson if you move on from Truba in one way or another. Maybe Kako gets traded. Maybe Lingren gets traded. I, I really don't want them to trade Lingren, but I feel like I'm kind of in the minority there. Um, and, and certainly I would uh, at least understand such a move. But yeah, Stevenson, you know, there's, there's things to like. Uh, one other thing that I got to mention here, he's a little bit hit and miss when it comes to playoff hockey. Uh, 95 games, 15 goals, 24 assists, but Worth pointing out that he was absolutely huge in Vegas's run to the Stanley Cup. 22 Stanley Cup playoff games that season for Stevenson, 10 goals and 10 assists. So obviously flirting with point per game territory and a proven winner. Uh, he is now a two-time Stanley Cup champion. He won it all with the Capitals in 2018. And then, of course, uh, won it all with Vegas this past season. All right, we just want to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need and all the prizes you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home those huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. All right, let's go ahead and keep everything rolling here. On Locked On New York Rangers, we got one more player that we're really going to hone in on here, and then we've got a couple of honorable mentions at the end of the episode here, a couple of other names that I want to toss out there as far as being potential targets for the Rangers. But the guy we're really going to focus on here is winger Yakov Trenin, a 27-year-old center, six foot two, 201 pounds, uh, you know, I say center, he's listed as a center on a couple of different pages, but then you look at his, uh, you know, face-off rates and he just doesn't take that many face-offs, which leads me to believe that he's more often at wing than he is at center, but certainly he's capable of playing all three positions. So that's one reason I like him right off the bat, the position versatility. On top of that, again, six foot two, 201 pounds. So a uh, big guy known as a hard-nosed player, very physical, fights for pucks, uh, goes to the dirty parts of the rink, all things that Ranger fans are going to like. I think another thing that Ranger fans will like, 705 hits in 299 career games. So another guy, maybe not quite as much as Joshua, but this guy goes out there and plays physical and throws his weight around uh, quite a bit. Um, on top of that, I just mentioned 299 career games, 48 goals, 34 assists, uh, plus 20. So there, there is some offense there 
as well. You know, he's he's not somebody that gives you nothing offensively. Uh, has averaged 13 minutes, 57 seconds of ice time. Uh, only a 43% face-off winning percentage. But again, he doesn't play center really all that often, so it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, 129 block shots, 142 takeaways versus 116 giveaways. And he started his career with the Predators. He was with them for four and a half years. Split last season between the Predators and the Avalanche. And I went back and looked up because I don't remember like what he was traded for. So I looked it up. He was acquired by the Avalanche this past trade deadline season for a player who was a former six-round pick and has never once played in the NHL, as well as a uh, 2025 third-round pick. So they didn't really give up a whole lot to get him, did the Avalanche. And I don't know if that's any indication of like what his free agency market is going to look like. Is he going to be somebody that can be had uh, at, a, at a bargain rate? That's certainly at least possible. Again, it's not like the Avalanche were trading away big prospects and you know, high draft picks and all those things. I mean, a third-rounder is somewhat significant, but... Uh, probably worth it, given that the Avalanche were, you know, trying to acquire players that could help them win a Stanley Cup, which of course they did not do. But yeah, again, you know, big physical. Uh, there, there's some offense to his game. There's position versatility, and there's also the fact that he once uh, took on Zdeno Chara in a fight. This this was crazy. I was, you know, looking up some old videos of Trennan and wh what do we know about this guy and what does he bring to the table. One of the first things that comes up on YouTube when you search his name is a fight against Zdeno Chara. Uh, so basically, Trennan crushed McAvoy behind the net with a big hit, and then Chara jumped him. It was a clean hit. Chara jumped him, uh, basically starts punching, and away we go. You've got 22-year-old Trennan taking on 42-year-old Chara, and Trennan won. You know, it was back and forth, a couple of punches landed, but, you know, Chara's a giant. If you even just get a draw with him, it's basically like winning it. And uh, Trennan landed a really good right hand that kind of staggered Chara, so uh, that was cool to see, and, you know, it seems like he'll possibly fight if the occasion calls for it. Obviously, he's got some physicality to his game. And again, very similar to Joshua. Uh, Trennan is not exactly the biggest name on the market. There are splashier moves. There are bigger names out there. But somebody that I think could slide in there and play third line center for the Rangers. And once again, Philip Hedl, the ultimate X factor. If Philip Hedl is healthy and he's at third line center, you bump him down to the fourth line and uh, he can do his thing there. And same thing also with Joshua applies to Trennan here. You cannot overpay. But Trennan is very young. One of the younger free agents available, only 27 years old. So maybe a deal for like three, four, five years, whatever it might be, and uh, an average annual value of like 1.75 million, 2 million, somewhere in that vicinity. I mean, that would be about right. I don't have this in front of me, but I want to say he's coming off of a deal that paid him uh, $1.1 $1 million per season. So you'll see him get a little bit of a bump. That's just the nature of the beast uh, when somebody becomes a UFA. And obviously there's a lot of different teams that could come calling. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think this could be money well spent. You can't go overboard. You can't overdo it, but there is a lot to like here, uh, with Trennan. And with that, I want to go ahead and look at a couple of our honorable mentions here. I got four names written down that I want to throw out there as possible targets for the New York Rangers. The first one is Max Domi, 29 years old. We've talked about him in the past because he's one of those players. He's on a different team every season. And it feels like, you know, he's always available in free agency. He's always available when the trade deadline rolls around and he does some good things. Uh, certainly he has enough scoring to his game to play the third line for the Rangers. He can also play any of the three forward positions. So that's always nice. And has also been very solid in the playoffs the last couple of years as well. Uh, another name that I'm going to throw out there is defenseman Derek Forbort. Uh, we've been, you know, mostly focusing in on forwards because I think that's the Rangers biggest need, but you know, you never know what can happen. Do the Rangers trade Truba? Do the Rangers buy out Truba? Does Keandre Miller get traded? Does Ryan Linger get traded? I don't think any of those things can be ruled out. And uh, that being the case, you know, if one of those things happens, do you then bring in somebody like Derek Forbort, uh, 32 years old, six foot four, 216 pounds. He could be your sixth or def seventh defenseman, depending on how things shake out. You know, I, I think certainly Eric Gustafson is going to walk. You'll see Zach Jones probably start next season as the number six defenseman. But then like if Chad Ruido walks, you need a number seven defenseman. Uh, could Forbort come in and do that? Uh, it's at least possible. He's another guy that really throws his weight around 858 hits in 496 games. Uh, basically zero offense, but that's okay. Um, somebody that's a big defenseman and could come in and fill a need, depending on what else the Rangers do uh, in free agency and you know with trades and buyouts and all those, all those things. Uh, how about another gigantic defenseman? I'm going to throw out Tyler Myers, uh, six foot eight, 229 pounds. 
A little bit of offense, five goals and 25 assists last season in 77 games with the Canucks. He'll be uh, certainly more expensive than somebody like Forbort. But if there's a Derek, uh, if there's a Jacob Truba buyout, if there's a Jacob Truba trade, do you put then some of that newly created cap space towards signing somebody like this? I think that's at least possible. 1,514 hits in 995 games uh, for Myers. And then one more, we'll go back to forward. 27-year-old Brandon Duheim. Uh, looks like he mostly plays right wing. He's a strong four checker. Spent last season between the Wild and the Avs. Another guy that basically is not going to give you any offense, but very physical. 555 hits in 211 games. Somebody that should be cheap. Uh, signed for just over a million dollars in his last contract. So I, I don't think it would be uh, too difficult to land him and put him into the bottom six. And if you want to separate yourself, if you're the Rangers from other potential bidders, you know, just give him a two-year deal. That might be all it takes. And, you know, just like that, he, he might be somebody that would be willing to come on board. Or if you really want to separate yourself, go to three years. And like I said, keep that average annual value as low as possible, maybe like three years at a million per, you know, something like that could at least be possible. But uh, figure we can call it there for today. Really looking forward to free agency season. Can't wait to see what happens and talk about it with you guys and discuss it on the episodes to follow. A couple of our little bits of news for the Rangers. Glenn Sather retires at the age of 80. He's had just about every different, you know, role you can have with the New York Rangers organization from coach to president to GM to special advisory, I think was his most recent title. Of course, he uh, coached the Edmonton Oilers back when they were doing their whole dynasty thing. Um, but he retires and also Colin Campbell, who was the assistant coach or one of the assistant coaches on the 94 cup winning team and then took over for Mike Keenan when Keenan left. I believe he coached the Rangers for four years. He is going to be going into the Hockey Hall of Fame as a builder. So big congratulations to, to Colin Campbell for that. And one other bit of news here is that the Rangers have asked Jacob Truba for his 15-team no-trade list. And some people are getting excited. There's people that want to see him gone. And, oh, they're going to do that, and that means they're going to trade him. Not necessarily. It could happen, but that's standard procedure. You know, teams need to know these things. Like, if, if somebody's got a, a no-trade clause, whether it's a – be able to block a trade to five teams, to 20 teams, to 12 teams, whatever it might be, uh, whichever team that that player is on is going to need to see that list. They're going to have to have them available. So they have asked Truba for his 15-team no-trade list. But again, standard procedure. Uh, we'll see what happens with Truba going forward. But that will do it for today, guys. Once again, if you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that's at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to the Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.